In this video, we learn about the second law of thermodynamics. The most common wording for the second law of thermodynamics is given by Rudolf Clausius. It states that it is impossible to construct a device which produces no other effect than transfer of heat from lower temperature body to higher temperature body. In other words, everything tries to maintain the same temperature over time and no machine is 100% efficient. We can imagine the thermodynamic processes which conserve energy but never occur in nature. For example, if we bring a hot object into contact with a cold object, we observe that the hot object cools down and the cold object heats up until an equilibrium is reached. The transfer of heat spontaneously takes place from the hot object to the cold object. We can imagine a system, however, in which the heat is instead transferred from the cold object to the hot object and such a system does not violate the first law of thermodynamics. The cold object gets colder and hot object gets hotter but energy is conserved. Obviously, we don't encounter such a system in nature. So to explain this and similar observation, physicists proposed a second law of thermodynamics. Clausius, Kelvin and Carnot proposed various forms of the second law to describe the particular physics problem that each was studying. It begins with the definition of a new state variable called entropy. Entropy has a variety of physical interpretations including the statistical disorder of the system but for our purposes, let us consider entropy to be just another property of system like enthalpy or temperature. The second law states that there exists a useful state variable called entropy S. The change in entropy delta S is equal to the heat transfer delta Q divided by the temperature T. Delta S is equal to delta Q by T. For a given physical process, the combined entropy of the system and the environment remains a constant if the process can be reversed. If we denote the initial and final states of the system by I and F, it should be SF is equal to SI. The second law states that if the physical process is irreversible, the combined entropy of the system and the environment must increase. The final entropy must be greater than the initial entropy for an irreversible process, that is SF greater than SI. An example of an irreversible process is the problem discussed earlier in this video. A hot object is put in contact with a cold object. Eventually, they both achieve the same equilibrium temperature. If we then separate the objects, they remain at the equilibrium temperature and do not naturally return to their original temperatures. The process of bringing them to the same temperature is irreversible. So, the differences in temperature, pressure and density tend to even out horizontally after a while. Entropy is a measure of spread of matter and energy to everywhere they have access. And entropy of the universe should increase always. Because if the entropy becomes constant and does not change, every object, machine, humans will come into thermal equilibrium with each other. When we reach to this point, the machines will no longer run, the human body won't function anymore. The world will come to an end, but scientists are speculating that this phase will occur in, in trillions and trillions of years from now. This is one of the widely supported theories on how the world will come to an end. This phenomena is named heat death of the planet. So that is why entropy is very important. So now let's again recall the second law of thermodynamics. There exists a useful state variable called entropy S. The change in entropy delta S is equal to the heat transfer 
delta Q divided by the temperature T. Delta S is equal to delta Q by T and on a more general term, the transfer of heat happens spontaneously from the hot object to the cold object. To sum up in this video, we learnt about a new state variable called entropy, defined second law which states the way things happen in particular direction and also learnt why entropy is important.